Do you know how to survive in extreme situations with minimal resources? This question might sound intense, but it's a crucial one to consider. In this video, we're going to explore 10 survival hacks that could potentially save your life in diverse situations. We'll begin with solar disinfection, a simple method to purify water using just a clear plastic bottle and sunlight. Then we'll show you how to power a flashlight without batteries. Ever thought you could use a crayon as an emergency candle or a tampon as a fire starter? Well, we're going to show you how. We'll also delve into the practical uses of everyday items like duct tape, aluminum foil, and even your favorite chips. You'll learn how to create an improvised compass, signal for help using sound, and keep warm using newspapers. Curious yet? Well, you should be. Stay tuned as we dive into these life-saving survival hacks. Water is life, but what if the only water available is unsafe to drink? In such a scenario, a clever method known as solar disinfection or SOTIS comes to our rescue. This technique uses the power of the sun to purify water, making it safe to drink. Here's how it works. You fill a clear plastic bottle with water and lay it in direct sunlight. Now you may be wondering why sunlight? Well, sunlight contains ultraviolet rays, which are capable of killing pathogens, the microorganisms that can make you sick. When you expose the water-filled bottle to sunlight for about six hours, these UV rays penetrate the water and disinfect it. It's a simple yet potent method to purify water without the need for any complex equipment or chemicals. The beauty of SOTUS is in its simplicity and accessibility, making it a lifesaver in a survival situation. With this method, you can ensure you have safe drinking water in a survival situation. What if you have a flashlight but no batteries? First, don't panic. You're not left in the dark just yet. You can use a simple pencil to bridge the gap in the battery compartment of your flashlight. It sounds too good to be true, right? But it's not. The lead in the pencil, which is actually graphite, is a great conductor of electricity. This is because it has delocalized electrons, allowing electricity to flow through it with relative ease. When you insert a pencil into the battery compartment, the graphite conducts the electricity from one end of the flashlight to the other, illuminating the bulb. Of course, this isn't a permanent solution. The pencil won't last forever, as it's not designed to handle the heat generated by the electrical current. But it's a temporary fix that can provide a much-needed light source when you're in a pinch. Now you can light up the path ahead. Ever thought of a crayon as a source of light? Crayons, those little wax sticks we've all doodled with, can also serve as a makeshift candle in a pinch. Here's how. First, you'll need to find a crayon. Any color will do, so pick your favorite. The beauty of a crayon is that it's essentially a bundle of wax with a wick in the middle. The paper that wraps around it, that's your wick. Now, to turn this childhood relic into a beacon of hope, stand it upright. This could be on a flat rock, a piece of metal, anything that won't easily catch fire. Once your crayon is standing tall, light the top where the wax is exposed, and voila, you have your very own crayon candle. A typical crayon can burn for about 30 minutes, providing enough light to get things done when the sun dips below the horizon. With this, you can keep the darkness at bay. Fire is one of the most important survival tools, but how can you start one? Well, you may be surprised to hear this, but a tampon can be your best friend in a survival situation. That's right, a tampon. Tampons are made from cotton, a material that catches flame quickly and serves as excellent tinder. Here's how it works. You first need to remove the cotton from the applicator. Once you have a nice fluffy pile of cotton, you can use a spark or a small flame from a lighter or matches to ignite it. The cotton in a tampon is highly compressed, which means there's a lot of material there. Once it catches, the flame can last for a good few minutes, giving you time to add larger pieces of tinder and kindling. So the next time you're packing your survival kit, don't forget to include a few tampons. They're a quick and easy way to start a fire. Injuries can happen. How can you treat wounds when medical supplies are scarce? This is where duct tape, the versatile tool found in almost every home, comes into play. Yes, you heard it right. Duct tape can be a lifesaver when it comes to wound care in dire situations. First things first, 
always ensure the wound is clean before you do anything else. Use water, or ideally, a mild antiseptic if available. Once the wound is clean, you're ready to use the duct tape. Cut small strips of duct tape just long enough to span the wound. Start applying these strips across the wound, gently pulling the edges together as you do. It's important to remember, this isn't a long-term solution, but it can definitely buy you some time, especially in a survival situation. So, there you have it. Duct tape, not just for fixing broken things around the house, but potentially a life-saving tool in your survival kit. This could be the difference between life and death. Hungry? Let's cook, but how without a stove or a pot? Welcome to the smart solution of using aluminum foil for cooking. This common household item transforms into a versatile cooking tool in survival situations. Wrap your food securely in a shiny piece of aluminum foil, making sure to seal the edges properly. Now you're all set to place it near an open flame or on hot coals. The reflective nature of aluminum foil directs the heat onto your meal, cooking it evenly. But what about water? Glad you asked. Aluminum foil can also be molded into a makeshift pot. Fill it with water and place it over a fire. The heat conductivity of aluminum foil will make the water boil, providing you with safe drinking water or a means to cook grains and pasta. This lightweight and compact material is a must-have in your survival kit. So next time you head out into the wild, don't forget your trusty aluminum foil. Now you're ready to cook your meal in the wild. Lost? Need to find your direction? Well, no need to worry. Even in the most challenging circumstances, there's a way to find your bearings. Let's talk about creating an improvised compass with a needle. It's an old school trick that can come in handy in survival situations. All you need is a needle, a piece of clothing and a leaf floating on water. Start by magnetizing the needle. You do this by rubbing the needle against your clothing. Yes, it's as simple as that. The friction will magnetize the needle, aligning the electrons in one direction. Next, place this magnetized needle gently on a leaf floating in water. If done correctly, the needle will align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. This means that one end will point towards the north and the other towards the south. With this, you can always find your way. So no matter how lost you feel, remember, you can always create your compass and find your direction. Need to start a fire but don't have any tinder? Well, you might just have a solution in your snack bag. Yes, you heard it right. Those tasty, crunchy chips you love to munch on can also serve as an excellent fire starter. Chips, especially those high in fat and oil, are surprisingly flammable. To use them, simply pile a few chips together and light the edge with a match or lighter. The oil in the chips helps sustain the flame allowing it to catch on to larger pieces of wood or other fuel. This hack is especially useful if you're out camping and forgot to pack tinder, or if you're in a survival situation and need a fire for warmth or cooking. It's an unconventional method, sure, but it's effective and a great example of thinking outside the box. So next time you pack for a trip, remember to toss in a bag of chips. Not just for the road munchies, but also as a potential lifesaver. Who knew chips could be so handy? How do you signal for help when you're lost or in danger? That's a question we hope you'll never have to answer. But it's essential to know the answer, just in case. One way to signal for help is by creating noise. You can bang rocks together, drum on a hollow object, or use a whistle. The key is to make a consistent, loud noise that can be easily identified as a distress signal. For example, if you're using a whistle, the universal distress signal is three short blasts. Repeat this every minute until help arrives. If you're banging rocks or drumming, use the same pattern. The consistency of the pattern will help others recognize it as a call for help, not just random noise. It's also important to consider the direction of the sound. Try to direct your noise towards any signs of civilization or areas where people are likely to be. Remember, help is only a signal away cold? Need to keep warm? It's a common challenge in survival situations, especially when the mercury dips low. But here's a hack that can make the difference between hypothermia and a night of relative comfort. Insulation with newspapers. Newspapers, you see, are more than just a source of information. They're also a surprisingly effective insulator. How so? 
Well, paper is a poor conductor of heat. This means it doesn't allow heat to pass through it easily. When you stuff newspapers inside your clothing, you're essentially creating an additional layer that traps body heat, keeping you warmer for longer. To do this, simply take a few sheets of newspaper, crumple them up to create pockets of air, and then stuff them into your jacket, pants, even your boots. The air trapped within the crumpled paper acts as an insulator, reducing the amount of heat lost to the cold. Stay warm, stay alive. Until next time, be prepared, be safe.